now recording. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the 50th edition of the Now Recording Podcast. I am the 50th edition special guest, Dead on Dave. We've got core master Matt Pitt, Mitch, and Toxic Piplup. Thanks for having me, boys. Welcome, Dave. It's, uh, it's glad to uh, finally get you on here, you know? Took 50 episodes. Well, the thing the thing is, like, you're never in drama, so... No. No, it's not. Hot, like, and we cover, <laughs> we cover like petty bullshit Spurg drama. And I don't got a lot of it. Yeah. You're never in the middle of this shit. So it's like, damn, I want to have Dave on, but I uh, like, I also want to cover fucking, I don't know, this fucking groomer who's getting molested by a uh, animal or something, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I get it. You know, you know. As one does, Matt. I totally yeah. understand your. <laughs> I'm so, I'll but, try to fuck up more in the future for you. But yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, well, speaking of like verbal molestations, I guess I don't know. Uh, Mr. Like, Salvo, Salvo Pancakes is in the news uh, now. Uh, hmm? He's been exposed as a uh, disgusting, uh, uh, mal- malicious uh, creature. Yeah. Deviant. <laughs> a uh, a deviant. Salvo, as you know, is a friend of the Now Recording Podcast. Um, we really make great friends. You know, you know, Craig Beckett was our thumbnail guy for True. a while. Um, <laughs> oh God, this place is cursed. But you know, Salvo was um, Salvo was big on Now Recording. He he came on everyone anytime we asked. He was a huge supporter. Mentioned us. Uh, was a big part uh, in our little drama with Tipster and stuff like. With the Keemstar show, like he was, he was a big part of everything. So, uh, and now he's getting exposed by his own news team. His own news team has turned on him all at once. All no, at it, once, just all these stories all at once. Just ironically, just a few weeks after he lost the Keemstar job, but whatever, whatever. That's yeah, probably had nothing to do. Uh, with it. Riveter sent me something. I gotta find it. Where is it? All right, let me just. Let me just search it real quick. The Riveter sent me something with Clara. It's a screenshot. I don't know if it's from the Salvo News Team server, but it says the way it started was me feeling the need to be very honest to Parking Tigers months ago about Salvo and being together. And PT being a good person. So Bex, Bex is also uh, a female in the uh, Sal- uh, Salvo News Team, uh, yes. opened up to him say uh opened up to him say what you want about him betraying other people's trust but it really was the start of salvo's downfall the pt slander is dumb because he has been looking out for me and for people uh hurt by salvo from the start he got lied to and betrayed to the messiness of how this all how this all coming out is understandably frustrating but it's all the doing of a guy who will never take any responsibility for any of his actions so this kind of shows that um parking tigers was aware of at least a relationship between clara and salvo for uh, like two months ago yeah which Um, doesn't in and of itself necessarily mean all that much it it means something but to what degree eh, we don't know uh, Clara is uh, the sec- like the second fiddler to Salvo, the uh, the Matt Pitt uh, to Salvo, if you will. Is that, is that the one you want to go with? That's the analogy. Sure. She's sure. the Matt Pitt. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll, Tommy, I'll already, Tommy already told me he was going to fuck me in the ass on Sharp and the Point. Oh, there you go. Was, yeah, was, oh <laughs> nice. Is that, is that what's going to happen when you guys get to fifty k? I don't. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that great. That's a hell of a celebration. But uh, it turned out it turned out that uh, Clara was in a uh, full blown. A relationship was with, with Salvo, where Salvo was uh, saying that he was going to leave his wife for this uh, British woman that he met six months ago. He was just going to get on a plane and fly to to Great Britain to be with Miss Clara. Yeah. <laughs> God, women. Uh, you know, I hate to be the misogynist here, but uh, like women, they they fall uh, like they. I'll Same, say it. They, they're, they're stupid. Suckers. Yes. They're suckers. Goddamn that- suckers. They read too many romance novels. Look, the only reason why this is even plausible to believe is the fact that he's from Ohio. A- anywhere else in America, <laughs> you're not going to a third world country like England. You're not going to leave <laughs> America for a third world fucking inferior cesspool like England. They don't even let you have guns there. Fuck that. But Ohio, it would be an upgrade. So I believe it there. Yeah. Uh, I think with uh, when it comes to Clara, you know, she's a uh, fellow amputee brethren. She's missing three of her five fingers. She does the uh, hang loose perpetually. 
on her hand. But, uh, you know, and I, I respect her for that. You know, I got to respect my amputee brethren, but she got, she, she got suckered, you know? And I like, I'm a dude, I get it. But looking at Salvo, I'm like, that's a guy who would cheat on his wife for sure. Sure. You know, <laughs> sure. I'm just being honest. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, look, <laughs> he was he was perpetuating around that it was an open relationship. Whatever the fuck, even Keemstar was told that in the past. So it's not like it was all that new. But still, last couple of months, whatever. And I've told it enough times over on my channel where you started bringing in the whole cucking thing, it, which yeah, it's just one weird after. That's the thing, Matt. This whole situation, everything else notwithstanding, it's the amount an excess of weird shit that got dumped at once it's like you don't expect to go through the kink fucking catalog with one guy in a three-hour period and that's yeah. what happened it was like this is weird even yeah. by our standards oh yeah yeah weird. it's it's so weird you think it would be fake right toxic yeah. i know okay when this all first started right i told matt uh women are easy to be easily manipulated right matt yes that's the first thing i said because everyone who bit first was a woman yep and now yeah, but slowly... edwin bit late and he's a guy well he's like a fin boy right that's he's true. like halfway there right, yeah right. living on a um, prayer. Yeah, I got <laughs> and something else is like rubbing me the wrong way with this whole thing right you got like people on twitter like parking tigers he's like oh yeah now salvo's a really bad guy huh it's like the way the way they're tweeting it's like they're trying to force you to like fall yeah. for it and then there was that slug clip where um who was on that stream matt um the the uh, slug? slug cj brown parking tigers right i think uh maybe and some other guy i don't know who who else was on there but i one of the other salvo news team members listen all right snt is not that smart i think they didn't know slug was live and then he was like oh yeah it's all a bit it'll be revealed next week and he fucked up but no one caught on because it's slug who cares right <laughs> it's plausible <laughs> when it's slug yeah yeah and i get they want their flowers for exposing all of this you know eventually uh I'm, and, and to an extent they should but the problem is they can't shut the fuck up about themselves at this point you, you don't get to make it about yourselves after fucking deciding to get to expose something that you've known about or at least tolerated or dealt with whatever for a period of time. You don't get to fucking get it both ways. People are going to feel ways about you and you're going to have to deal with that. Uh, you, this is the part that's bothering most about them, seeing what they're trying to do now. Spin a narrative, like they can't deal with being the bad guys or not being looked at as the good guys even. And that's yeah. a problem usually. That, that's not gonna end well for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the thing about the slug thing, right, Toxic, is, is I think it's, the way what I saw on stream was them fucking with slug, right? Being like, yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, it's a bit. Okay, it's a bit. But that was like them fucking with slug. It's just one of many things that make me think it's fake. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. can say that. But to what also, end, though? That's the thing about fake stuff. It's like you, there usually has to be a point. Even with Salvo, there have to. So what's the end game here? What's the what's the payoff? And, and how long do you have to, would, would they keep this bit going? Like, when are they going to go, ta-da? Like, wouldn't they have done that by now? It's, See, just the, it's just the fact that it's Salvo. So right. you never can be too sure. But I, I, I and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to you in a sec, talk, I just want to make this quick point. Um, I made this point on Shopping the Point. I think I kind of, and Dave, I think you might have done this as well, but we kind of put Salvo on a pedestal, right? Yeah. We, we, he was like a comic, comic genius. We saw him as like a fucking Andy Kaufman. That he was like, this was all was like, pass. yeah, this was all a character. And he was like, basically writing his like internal scripts. Uh, everything was like, you know, kind of chalked out and outlined. And he was, he was, he had some sort of chaotic goal that he was going towards. Yeah. But in reality, it's quite possible. And I'm not saying this, but it is quite possible. It's getting more possible day, day after day that he's just fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I interrupt you, Toxic. You can go ahead. Um, well, apparently Salvo said um, it'd be really um, funny if I just disappeared into like in twenty twenty three, right? And like yeah. everybody would miss me or whatever. Yes, I think it's really strange that. with the timing of this. It's like right at the end of twenty twenty two, like right before yeah. New Year's. He said on like, yeah, he said on stream. He said the last stream he did. He said, "Wouldn't it be crazy if I just never came back?" Yeah, but hmm. that could just be setting up a way to to deal with what he knew was coming. 
that yeah, yeah. That, see everything's kind of landing the other way for me now it's like i can see other like the uh, the aloe piss girl right she drank piss and i was thinking her name is aloe piss but then tommy and optimus brought up the cha- uh the suggestion was was her name aloe piss before this and i, right. I looked for evidence and no her name was not aloe piss before all this mm. her name was mommy your and aloe but never aloe piss mm. so it's possible that Sabo had her change her name to aloe piss yeah, and this is the type of credit that you'll give to people when you think that they're a character. I, yeah. I, I think I said this pretty early on that when you're dealing with guys like this, whether it's you know the Kaufmans or, or whoever when they're when they're in character, if they're either that character and you believe it, you go with it, you give them that benefit of the doubt, or you come to realize they're like the fucking worst person in the world. Because if they're not a character and they're really doing and saying the things that they're saying, I nobody's going to defend that it goes without yeah. saying so the apologies after the fact almost make me crazy because any rational person you look at it he's so crazy you can't possibly believe that he's real you know uh so that's the only defense i don't know if it's a good defense but that's it you know right yeah uh, it's like a whole the, like what, what where does the character end for this guy and where does like the real salvo pancakes begin and then uh, it just seems like he was just uh he was just crazy i don't know <laughs> and it almost always never matters either yeah because this happens they do this to themselves if you're fucking sick and you can't deal with a little bit of success and let's face it he didn't get the big success that some of us thought he was going to get he got a small taste of it and he couldn't fucking handle that yeah. You know, and that that might be the most telling thing of it. I think at the beginning when you had CJ Brown and Parking Tigers doing the stream, it felt really fake. Uh, the screenshots they were showing did not feel real, uh, except for the Ashers part. With the Ashers, I felt like Salvo was fucking with her. The, I don't yeah. think Salvo was actually sexting her. I don't think Salvo was actually masturbating. Uh, I think he was like fucking with her to get her to like say something. Uh, didn't she reach out to people, Core? about about all this like a while ago yeah she reached out to me and she was she was asking me like what do i do uh i don't want to betray keem uh she was like he he keeps thinking advances on me and it was just it was just kind of weird um at first because i was like i don't know how to take this uh but I, I, I constantly, uh, I said to her, "Well, if you could, you could watch both, both of them and be, be fans of both of them, or if you want to, quote unquote, believe you're friends with them." I don't know if she was or wasn't, but you know, that's a whole other thing. But I said they're both fucking married. Let's remember this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like my conspiracy theory. Now it is a conspiracy theory. I felt like it was kind of real. Is manipulate Ashers into coming out with their story, have other girls come out alongside of her, and come out with their own stories to increase. Uh, the believability and have Ashers feel comfortable like going public and then turn this into a whole fucking show. And it yeah. felt like that up until the Keemstar show. And then I had, then you have Clara coming on talking about girls uh, drinking piss, uh, clown porn. Uh, there was uh, a conversation. There was a, a sexual interaction, uh, actual intercourse where Salvo tried to take out his camera and was caught allegedly. Uh, he could have been just checking your text for all I know, but you never know with that situation. <laughs> um, but yeah, all that mixed like th- that was dropped on the Keemstar show. It it helped the story, but it also hindered it because of how like ridiculous it was. Yes, it well, was. And I, and I think you know I, I, what's the payout was something that was just brought up a, a little bit ago. I think the the thing is is people have stopped talking about Savo. People didn't do anything about Salvo. Like Xylee stopped talking about about him. Uh, Tipster, fucking flamenco, the top, the, the top player, right? And um, and now everyone's talking about him. You know, that's his payoff of, huh? I finally got got to talk about you. You got you to talk about me. You know, because he, he, nobody talked about Salvo for the last. Well, year that's only good if he really is like into all of the kinks and shit and the degradation <laughs> and things that we're hearing that he is because you can't work with him now even if this turns out to be a fucking elaborate work the shit is so crazy he's untouchable uh, am i wrong yeah. there am i am i crazy even if he comes out at this point and everybody fucking has to walk back everything that they said it's too late at this point and i i yeah. would fuck I'm, i'd look at everybody like you were fucking crazy if you were i'd be annoyed guy. i'd be annoyed oh, god I right yeah. I'm i 40. think keemstar 
If Keemstar and Edwin are a part of it, they lose all oh, credibility. Dude, all I guarantee credibility. you they are. After that three-hour fucking Salvo crisis hotline, you're goddamn fucking oh right. God, they dude. invoked friendships. Hell, Keem was great on my show, and I fucking loved having him on in the context that we had him on the other day. God, that was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, but he, he invoked a lot of friendship shit. He made that real. You mm -hmm. know, like, no one th adding context about Salvo's personal life, that was all, th that can't be worked. You know, if it is, you guys are fucking sociopaths. There's like something you yeah. guys created narratives and storylines. What is this, a fucking writer's room? No, this should <laughs> be fucking fake at this point. And even if it is, it's just too far down the tracks. All right, let's well, go. I, I, go I ahead, was go. just going to say, all, all the information is coming from the Salvo news team. That's the other thing, too. Like, <laughs> I, I, all, yeah. all the, it's no outside sources. Like, I, I, I thought Liana would get picked on. I thought no, I'll give you an outside uh, source. I, I, I thought I thought Cutie Kitten or like all these other people would would like come out with a, something uh, from Salvo, but nobody has come out outside of Salvo's inner circle about so any kind of count, like things. Uh, would you count the girl that he went to fuck as inner circle? Yeah, that's an interesting one, right? The, the someone's actually saying that peeing in the vagine, you know? Yeah, uh, or would you count the uh, girl that did clown porn inner circle? I mean, you could. I don't she know. It hasn't been confirmed that. Well, whether, yeah, I, I'm not saying. Uh, well, but are, are they like Salvo people? Like, did they hang out in the Salvo server? Like, I, uh, I the don't girl know. that did clown porn claims that she was like a full blown outsider that she had no idea what was going on in the SNT or anything like that. She wasn't involved in any of that stuff. She just watched Salvo and that he reached out to her. So I don't know. It could be. I uh, like. It could be a lie. But yeah. Okay. Uh. But how, how, like, let's go through, like, right now I'm about 85, 15, that it's real? Toxic, yeah. where are you? Uh, probably like 30 fake, or no, 30 real, 70 fake. Mitch? Um, I'm about 10 fake. I've been that since the beginning, but because I always thought he was a bit weird. So ninety real. Uh, uh, core. That doesn't mean I cared though, or gave a shit, like or jumped on any bandwagon. <laughs> uh, me. Uh, I'm like sixty forty. I'm sixty forty. Uh, fake or real? Uh, I'm sixty percent sure that some of the allegations are real, and okay. forty percent that it's still there's still part of it being a troll. Okay, Dave. 99 percent sure Salvo did this shit. So <laughs> and, and all, all, like, Salvo's a sex pest, man. All of and, all of us except for Toxic are pretty much convinced that it's real. Yeah. Or like at least uh, some of it is real. So that that's in, that's just insane to me. Um I never thought, over either way. Yeah, dude, me, uh me, all the new uh now recording guys were just watching everybody come out believing it, like Leia something and all these girls and stuff. We were like, oh my of course they're gonna believe it. Oh my god, they're <laughs> stopping this up. Oh, what a fucking bunch of fucking marks. And then like, oh shit, it's looking like it's real. So uh, I'll egg on my face, I guess. Now, Ashers, you hear that? I got egg on my face. I got the egg on my face, Ashers. You fucking, <laughs> you fucking autistic. Whoa. Bird. Whoa, yeah, hey, whoa. Whoa. See, see the payoff question from earlier too could have had an answer already because right up into, I even say thirty minutes into the Keemstar show, I thought it was part of it. I thought Keem was going to bring him on. Something. I thought something was going to yeah. break at that. He was going to pop point. out behind the desk in the back or something? Something. It just had that type of vibe for a little while. Now, yeah. the phone calls and, and everything, it really Brantley's reactions, I think, to getting uh, – she did a good job, too, of, of just selling it to me. Uh, yeah. Seeing her getting all these texts in real life and her reacting to some of the shit that was being said and what she did share, and it was intriguing. It was a, it really made it seem real. So I, I, I at this point, it almost seems silly to even to debate whether it was or not because it's moot. It was number one. This fucking dude Salvo was sexting Maya. Fucking, that's a crazy Ooh. thing to do. Wow. Uh, number two, yeah, yeah, that's I would. She's hot, but man, look, look, she's fucking smoking hot. I, I will put my hand hot. on the Bible and say she is a very attractive woman, but she is fucking insane. She dropped my DMs and I didn't say anything. Now nah, you're obviously DM. trying to blackball her now. Nah, nah, yeah, obviously. Like, fuck, I, like literally the DMs are her sending me a bunch of screenshots and me saying, okay, I'll look at it. I'll look I through bet it. She that's, is that's I bet she's shows. incredible in bed. I bet she is Dude. absolutely <laughs> fucking I'm on the case. I'll get back to you. Toxic, you're, toxic you're, let me smell that shit, your life. man. <laughs> 
Jeez. Get in there, and I want copious notes, my friend, because that I'm telling you, she's gonna rip your dick off like a stock of fucking corn. It's gonna be amazing. She's gonna, she's gonna ruin your hands. yeah. She yeah, she does. She's gonna ruin your bed and then ruin your life. <laughs> I just said hi. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Oh, Get in there. Put <laughs> You're in trouble, it. bro. I You're... love this idea. <laughs> Dude, do not say anything. Do not go beavers in this situation. It's going to get leaked. I'm telling Show you. Show me right yours. Now. I can't wait to see a video of you standing on one room and her standing on the other, and and you cowering as she's fucking screaming at you and <laughs> yeah, stuff reacting. Oh out your God. other eye. She's just it's going hard. for you. She's... <laughs> Bruh. It's worth it. Also, another update for today. Um, apparently, I saw the screenshots. Uh, Salvo doxed uh, Brantley's actual first name. I guess Brantley's actually an alias. It's not a real name. Is that so, last name? Yeah, Brantley's not an actual name. That's that. I could have told you that. That. That's so yeah. What, so what does Salvo mean? <laughs> Salvo revealed her first name to the uh, Salvo News team members. There's a screenshot of it. Uh, so yeah. So I That's mean, a I, shitty thing to do. It, yeah, it is. And then hey, you he's got, got his... so many of these, man. And, and yeah. they were ignored for a while because they were they, they were kind of like accepted as the funny way of doing it. But I don't know. Maybe that was our mistake to a point too. Well, the the Chris and Ark thing I thought was kind of fucked up, and I knew about this before because. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Salvo said it was a fake name, I kind of believed him. I thought he did right. like a name. I thought he like rhymed his last name or something, you know, like uh, like uh, like William Bradford is William Cradford or something like that. Like he just did like a rhyme or something. And uh, I basically I was on clear as mud and I started you know making jokes. I was like, yeah, he said your last name. He said your name, huh, Chris? <laughs> huh? He said you're great. And Chris was like, yeah, no, it was a fake. Yeah. And meanwhile, he's DMing me saying, no, it was real. Please stop talking about this. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. Okay, Chris, Chris <laughs> is a good guy. Chris Denark, you know, he, he he doesn't always make it the easiest to tell if it's fake or real going on sometimes. But that's a good guy. That is a guy that I think you want in your corner. He will be your yeah. fucking friend. And he'll go to the mat for you. That's a good fucking dude. And he he had it rough in this situation because he's kissed Salvo. You know, he's been in. Yeah. He's shared some fucking moments with this guy, and he's had to deal with Keem and and all the situations that has happened uh, with that. And he's dealt with it all all fairly well including the abby blackbird stuff so uh, stick tap the fucking uh chris the narc i say yeah um i think he's uh i think he's done a good job through all this uh he can be kind of annoying sometimes just because <laughs> of his personality <laughs> he never well, he's from buffalo he can't help yeah that. yeah true but he's never been like he's not a he's not a, he's not a mean dude he's not no. an, uh, he's not a hateable guy Oh, and he doesn't guy. deserve the shit he got from Salvo. And now that I realize, I thought the bit was shitting on Chris because that's the funny thing to do. Yes. If he was invoking some sort of like seriousness to this or really fucking with Chris is emotions. Um, then yeah, I guess that's not a good, like, I, that's just not in me to do. Like, I understand that that can be funny. I understand yeah. fucking with someone can actually be pretty funny. Uh, going that extra mile, pushing that envelope, uh, doing what Red Bar and all those guys do. But I never seen the benefit. I've never seen the benefit in it. I've always enjoyed um, trying to make the person laugh that I'm fucking with, right? Yes. Like when with Xylee, I did the Granny Xylee, all that that little meme. That was just to well, it's make funny you that laugh. way, Matt. Yeah. You know, like in comedy, when you go too fucking far and someone feels starts to feel, it doesn't even have to be real, but if they start to feel that you're coming from a malicious place, they're only gonna laugh with you so long. Yeah. And eventually that laughter come turns into questions like are you me in this shit and then it's not fun or funny for anybody it's how you ruin your bit yeah so, yeah I'm, I'm with you on that yeah uh and w- speaking of xylee has did anyone see the stream today <laughs> i did <laughs> yeah a little bit yeah xylee smash bro when she <laughs> hit that she hit that song my boyfriend's back and you're gonna be in trouble bro i was like fuck yeah oh yeah <laughs> that's what you gotta do that was uh salvo's intro song um, we need Zylie so, to destroy ya. bro. It was it was fantastic. Uh, great stream all together. Very. She went she went after everybody. She went after after Clara, Shadow Humor, Parking Tiger, CJ Brown. Uh, the she 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 went after Salvo. Uh, there was a clip of Salvo saying he was going to dox her and go kill her husband on one of yeah. the streams. Yeah. Uh, so and I saw I saw that live. Uh, and I remember thinking, I don't want to tell Zylie about that. I think right. I, I'm just going to let that one go because <laughs> at that point I was thinking, okay, he doesn't mean this, right? but if I take this to Xylee and go, look, she's going to get like 
it's gonna fuck with her. Like that's what he wants. And if she's trying to stay away from the shit, and I got no reason to be like, hey, look what Sao said about you. Right. Because yeah. our advice had pretty much been give it a fucking laugh it off and ignore it. You know, like yeah. it, it, like but if you really want it to stop, don't interact with them at all. Um it, it wasn't mattering because the, the SNT was fuck they were in her kitchen. You know, guy, yeah. it was non fucking stop. So if there was anybody who had an absolute axe to grind with this, and I'm glad that she did decide to sharpen it in 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 righteousness the way that she did, because yeah. uh, she wielded it right and she wielded it at the right people, and I, I think that it was a, a, a rousing success, and it was in is justified. It felt right. These don't always feel right. You always kind of want to question the person, and in this one, you can't. It's a slam dunk. It was perfect the way she went about it because she also left the door open just in case this was fake. Yeah. So it's basically saying, y'all, the news team are fucking douchebags, and if this is fake, you're not going to get me because, like, I'm aware. I'm aware yeah. that I, I don't even know if I still believe this. So, you know. And even if it is, what benefit is it going to go after the fact? I, 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 I it, Jesus Christ, if it's fucking fake, I'm going to sound like a fucking bleeding Karen at the end of it. I'm going to be so fucking annoyed. I'm like, are you kidding me? You guys are the fucking worst. Oh, Christ. I can't <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I mean, but I will say this. Look, um, this has been the most interesting story of the year, guys, right? The year? No, uh, did, did it just shut you so far? Did it? Did it? Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, um, Flamenco going crazy today, mixed with the Xyli stream, uh, mixed with Tommy stream. Like, this has been a, a great day for content. Oh, wait, mixed with the Packers winning? Let's go. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. you, Mitch. Don't that, don't that wasn't Mitch. That, whoever it was. <laughs> See, I, I, know, I, I, don't know I, I, I don't know toxic, American football. It's fine. As long as you're not picking fucking the Packers, you're fine. Toxic. <laughs> don't 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 start. Okay. <laughs> don't fuck. I lost Lonely forty day. to ten today. They, they, sh- <laughs> you're not getting in the playoffs next week. It all comes crumbling down, and I'm gonna fucking laugh. And Aaron Rodgers gonna have to go back to selling drugs to kids. Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, well, if we're on the topic of football, how about fucking Ohio State just ruining their chances oh, for I, national championship? I love that. Fuck. It was so funny. Was right, like, and this is where ball. everyone tunes out. It was like okay. the borderline of like the countdown to like the new year, and then he just kicks and is just like, <laughs> Bulldogs. <laughs> what yeah. a great start to his year. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, all right, back on subject. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Right, cool. Sports, sports ball. Jeff would Jeff would love this. Um. <laughs> Uh, so when it comes to all of this uh, Zyli stuff and what the flamenco stuff was that was going on, he was spurging like crazy today, uh, mixed with uh, the Tommy stream and all of this stuff happening. It was a great day for content. It was one of the best days for content I have seen since Chris Hansen Onision, where there was like two or three streams going on. You're like, fuck, which one do I watch? They're covering different things. All this shit's going down. What's going on? You know, it was a really good day for content. Would you guys agree? Yeah, um, I think it's a good sign for how this year is going to go. Every single day this year is going to be like this, and I can't wait. Yeah, right. right. This, this <laughs> isn't setting up the rest of the year for utter disappointment at all, Matt. No, <laughs> yeah. Bro, if no it, it was a good day. I, yeah. I, I'm glad that Tommy had a huge fucking shot from the point today. I watched a lot of the uh, the after stuff, especially the just the insanity with Flamenco. My God. Oh, that fucking... was beautiful. What? <laughs> that is one of the stupidest fucking human beings <laughs> walking around planet earth right now cro magnum fucking flamenco <laughs> jesus this guy is missing a chromosome I, I i'm worried about him drowning in the bathtub while he's standing up taking a shower this guy i feel like he <laughs> might drown in soup wear water wings <laughs> helmet this motherfucker i couldn't believe the stupidity coming out of this man's mouth we, oh. we, we talked to him on a stage afterwards and we came to a realization uh, we've come to this realization before he just can't help it. No. He literally just cannot help it, dude. It's just, it's, there's something in his brain. He does this pattern, right? Uh, you say something about him that he disagrees with. He jumps on, he spurgs out, he yells, he screams, he argues with you, calls you names. Uh, then everything kind of calms down. He starts to talk to you like you're human <laughs> beings. You treat him like a human being. You come to some sort of like understanding and you agree to disagree, anything like that. And then he leaves. And then uh, two or three hours later, he's on another stream, freaking the fuck out, spurging, calling this person names, screaming. Like, it, it just repeats itself over and over. And the advice we've always given him is, don't spurg like this, Flamenco. You're making yourself look retarded. He just doesn't understand it. 
Sometimes you can't help where you come from, my friend. And uh, <laughs> his kill stream has come out. Is all I want to fucking. Bro, bro. I the the lack of self awareness of a guy who's covered Ethan Ralph as long as he's covered. I just don't you get know, it. it's crazy too because when you look at like Ethan Ralph and, and not to bring up what's going on with the Ethan Ralph Medicare thing, but I watched a clip of uh, Ethan Ralph reacting to him getting his award from Medicare and the just shit we're well, not gonna be around to fucking give next year's award. I'm like, <laughs> oh. and I'm like, that's flamenco. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 he would make those type of fuck. He's so has no self awareness. But yeah. Ethan Ralph is funny though. Ethan he Ralph is way funny. <laughs> he, he had a couple of nice little fucking uh, uh, hero arcs. I won't even say hero. Good guy. Good guy arcs, or at least good looking arcs, uh, in the middle of this year, which was kind of cool. Late part. Of yeah, that. yeah. Part of Thank it you, was. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Oh yeah, on that the, the game show. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah right about that. Yeah. The fireball. Bruh. By the way, I, I gotta mention uh, the moment I won that, I was like, "Yeah, I'm not getting this money. It's not happening. <laughs> I'm not getting the that. fucking money." Like, dude, I'm just, it's just not gonna happen. I knew, I knew from the beginning, like something was gonna happen, right? So I, I knew that uh, the money would not come, and I was never worried about it. Uh, I'm not Jessica Pizzle, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Jessica Pizzle so much. She was like, she was fighting today on uh, uh, of who called out whom first. Uh, she was showing screen. I was the first. I'm like, oh, you guys are all sick. You're bro, all yeah. fucking. Bro, she came. No, she came into my DMs because I replied to her tweet where she's like, "Why?" She was she was like, "Why isn't aren't people uh, shooting on Sal's Virginia on his wife? Why? Why are not anybody doing this? Why? Why am I the only one? What's going on?" I'm like, because people think it's probably bullshit. And then she like jumps in my DMs. Like, are you a part of this? She's like, oh, wow. are you are you part of this? Is this your setup? Are you a part of this? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Jessica, calm down. Yeah, okay. dude, she's she's all over the place. And she's always collecting L's. Uh, no offense, Jessica, but I love Jessica, man. But you're right. <laughs> she came into uh the waiting room, uh, Edwin's waiting room, and she started talking my ears off about Bo Blacks. And she was she was bringing up good points uh about Bo Blacks until I realized uh she was saying like why didn't Bo Blacks uh, talk about the tipster, tipster's wife when Salva was going after tipster's wife? Why wouldn't Bo Blacks talk about that? If he's so mad about Edwin, uh, uh, Edwin not defending him when Salva was going after Bo Blacks' autism. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you know what? Good point. And then I realized Bo Blacks did defend <laughs> tipster's wife. There's a tweet right there. And it's just another L for Jessica Pizzle. How long has Bo Blacks been mad at Edwin? Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> dude, I don't. But it's been. It's, it's, uh, I think it goes back to Fireball. To, uh, okay. Fireball, honestly, I think. Uh, I think he's still pissed off at him about the Fireball thing, and it just Edwin's keeps going. Gonna have I, a rough, I think he's gonna have a, a rough landing spot. Bruh, he, Edwin, my God, oh, dude, his stream was brutal. Um, uh, so he did go live. I didn't. I didn't see much of it. It was it uh, as brutal as I'm hearing it was. He cried. He cried. Really? It was. Uh, look, I like Edwin, but it just seemed more like. Uh, he was kind of just like, I'm sorry, you guys were right. Uh, you know, take me back, please. You know, it, it wasn't like that. I'm being hyperbolic, you know, in a joking manner, but it did kind of feel that way. Only thing he stood, he stood his ground against Tipster. He fucking hates Tipster. Oh yeah, he really? really, yeah. I tried to organize some sort of conversation with those two, uh, and Tipster said no. So that ain't happening. But yeah, they do. They like. If anything, Salvo burned that bridge between Tipster and Edwin. Like that's gone. Edwin's gonna have a little bit of a hard time, I think, for a while. I mean, he he went. It, it's not even that he went hard. A lot of people went hard. He went hard late when like things were starting yeah. to already go in the wrong direction. Yeah. And I just think it was timing is gonna be kind of a a, a harmful ally of his. Uh, no, going yeah, forward, but the, and, but he's also known as a shitster and all that kind of stuff anyway, which works for his, for his shows and stuff like that. So I don't know. We'll see what he does going forward. Just my advice is just own it. You did. You you were in there. It was what it was. Doesn't mean that you were involved with any of the other shit. So just the, the, don't make too big. Maybe not cry. I don't know if that was a good idea. He cried. But, he definitely <laughs> cried. <laughs> that might not be the best idea in the world. Did he address the bab stuff? Because I mean, I uh. when I had babs on, dude, Matt, you the power that was in my hand. It was because I I was like, what do I do here? I have the yeah. ability to really fucking do some nasty shit right now. <laughs> I can go, you know how many questions I had loaded up. I could have fucking asked some shit and I, I got silent with her. Cause I'm like, man, and I had a feeling she would answer him too. That yeah. was the fucked up thing. And then King came in and he said the same thing that was going on in my head. 
what the fuck was I thinking? Leaving her. <laughs> You're not going to get her out of here. <laughs> that happens. Because he knows. And I think he has to give me a little respect there because I could have fucking, I could have started some shit. Oh, yeah. We all could have just been like, I, I was like, I, I wanted to ask so, uh so you left Edwin for Keemstar? Right? No, no, it's even Bradley? better. He no, yes, he left. She left. Fucking Edwin. But who is Bradley, Bradley connected to? Bradley, I, I if I miss, if I mess this up, I mess this up. But uh, the other day when she was tweeting that night, it was that night she was in this adorable little outfit, Brantley, and she's saying, "I'm with my boyfriend and my girlfriend." Yes, yeah. that that's her woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, if Keem is catching residues. Good for him. Stick that. I'm just team. saying. That's I'm a, just saying. Woman. Brantley went to Edwin Fort, right? And Edwin Fort was okay. It was nice and comfortable. But then she visited Keemstar Castle, Castle Keemstar, yeah. and she's like, "All right, I'm staying at Castle Keemstar. I don't need Ed- Fort team. Edwin. I don't need Fort Edwin. I want Castle Keemstar." Hundred <laughs> you know? percent. So hundred percent. Look, Brant- hey, she's, Brant- she's she's a, she's pretty hot. I I it- think she's you know I'll be honest. I think she's hotter than Brantley. But like, you know, they're both hot. Yeah, opinion. they're both hot. They're both yeah. Hot. No, she's on her. No, she's not. Yeah, she is. Of course, a boob guy. So I, I like yeah. titties too. So I do like the boobies. But Brantley, Brantley's fucking smoking. I, yeah, I really Brantley's just keeps his mouth shut and mm-hmm. doesn't make a noise. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in, if you're in, high, yeah, Brantley is as hot as a girl at, at prom night, bro. That that that, that that's um. it. She she hit pinnacle there. Oh, I guess yeah, she would have been guys. one of those actresses when movies were silent and then they moved and became the talkies and had sound that she wouldn't have made it. She wouldn't have made it. <laughs> she would have been she left was like, in the dust. She, like, she was nah. the plot line of fucking singing in the rain. She was, she was, yeah. Don't let her sing. <laughs> don't let her talk. Let the other ones sing for her. I got, I got some good news, guys. What? Oh, okay. Team Star what? Team Star unblocked me. No. Yay! Yeah, oh. I, I think uh, that's a that's a dead on Dave W. That I think. Uh, yeah, it will. I mean, it turns out I was exactly right, Dave. I knew exactly were, why you blocked me. You I were said, so right. You called it, and then he explained it out to you anyway. It was what amazing. Was it? It was I sent the dead on when De- when Ed when team came on dead on Dave's stream and did that weird little. Well, you know, uh, what if I what if I took all the things uh, Nick said and I sent it to his college. <laughs> um, I took that timestamp and I, when, uh, Augie was live with Nick on after hours, I sent it to him because yeah. they were talking about Keem. They were going, the whole show was, uh, dedicated to Keem. So I always felt like, why not end it with, uh, this clip that's, uh, that will get, uh, eyes on dead on Dave stream. That's how Hell I think. Yeah. I'm not trying to fuck over Keem. I'm simply trying to get eyes on the prize. Look at you Dead doing Dave. gay ops, man. Yeah, trying to get eyes home. on a hot grown fucking yeah. commodity on YouTube, baby. Yeah. We're keeping True. the fires are stoked. Woo! Yeah. And of course, Keem considered this a gay op, which I guess he was uh, accusing all of us. How of, dare like, you do snake of you? Was, uh, you no, no, not you guys. I'm talking about Dave. Cool. He was accusing all of us of like being like, okay, uh, all right, so I'll timestamp it and then uh, uh, I'll send it over to Nick at the right time, and then uh, he'll go over it, and then we can shit on him and high-five and jerk off together, right? Pretty like, much. That, that, in his mind, that's how it happened. Yeah, like, my role was I was the first offender in the first place because of my treacherous and malicious and obviously ill-intended joke that when I wrote overreactions for 1,000, Alex. Yeah. And this is why I love Keem, because uh, when he came on the other day, he even said this. He goes, I can't let shit go. I'm an eye for an eye guy. I'm like, but mm. it, there was a nothing. I didn't. It was a, a very light joke that I meant as a throwaway comment. And yeah. he obsessed over it for weeks. I love him. Never change. Yeah. Never change. It was like he was picturing us all huddled up. And I'm like, all right, guys, Keemstar Gay Ops on two. Keemstar Gay Ops on two. Ready, break. And we're just like, Omaha. <laughs> Omaha. Like you're Peyton Manning out there yeah, getting ready yeah, to throw. Yeah, yeah. And fuck. <laughs> Timestamp. Oh, <laughs> I'm going up. <laughs> 26 oh 02 26 oh two. right <laughs> click right click right click <laughs> but uh yeah uh that brings us to uh this we we were thinking uh what to talk to you about on this sh- on this episode dave and luckily the salad stuff happened so we had a lot to talk about but there was one thing uh that i've uh hinted at a couple times on your show that you were not yeah. very privy on really going into and you said on dead on Dave, you're like all right book it i'll talk I'll about do it. it yeah absolutely yeah because so, you, you've um, had something that you've been obsessed with. So you had a Spurg. You, we already said before, you're not big into Spurg drama, but no. you had your own years ago, back in the day. I've had quite a few. 
Yeah. I've had, but I don't turn them into big things. Yeah. I, when, when I have an issue with somebody, if they start fighting outside of my show, they won't want, don't want to come on and talk to me and fucking do it like we're supposed to. Yeah. Well, then you don't exist in my fucking world. Yeah. If you become snaky and you become treacherous, you start fucking lying. You don't exist in my world. You don't get to. I don't give a fuck what people want to say about that. If you don't play by the rules that are set right here, suck an ass. You don't yeah. get to exist in my world. You, no, yeah. fuck all that. So, um, yeah, you experienced this, like, Spurg drama and everything. And um, sure. uh, it was a particular person. I don't want to go into, like, who they exactly were because they are fucking crazy. But They're this crazy. Per- yeah. This person, uh, will say, legally sold weed. <laughs> basically uh, there's no okay. way of tiptoeing around it we're yeah. telling the story we're telling the story well, i had a spy was starting to grow on yeah. on youtube catch 33 happened and people were coming to me with so i've had a few sponsors over the years mm-hmm. i've done a couple of different things um this was a situation where this lady who was from my home state uh hit me up because she was real supportive of veterans and she was trying to help my uh my nerve damage because i got severe nerve damage from my time in the military now it's actually turned out i have uh, two autoimmune diseases which probably has been substantially affecting me for years as well and didn't know uh but all these things that can be helped with you know weed and cannabis and i was on morphine for three years bedridden 525 pounds blah 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 you guys know the story by now oh yeah um and uh, I never wanted to touch another drug as far as I ever fucking lived. Uh, eventually got the weed. Weed helped a lot. I was in Germany. Can't get it very easily. So this was somebody who was reaching out going, I can send you stuff from all these different distributors. And you can make videos on them. And you get the stuff. I'm like, great. But that's the extent of the relationship. And I'm not going to take any money from you. Call them sponsor, whatever. I don't give a fuck. But that was the relationship. I was getting stuff from uh, distributors that she was mostly all veterans things i did a few videos where i was getting like all kinds of different cbd products and stuff sent to me in germany which was a big coup for me i got I got some relief which was nice not a lot because cbd's you know it is what it is yeah but um so it became friendly you know we became friends she uh, spent a lot of time in the uh in the chats and stuff and uh but clearly crazy but we're all crazy you could deal with a certain level of crazy as I long like crazy. as you folk absolutely and yeah. helping out people who are trying to start a business special one with a backstory that which i knew because we were friends I'll do the best i can to help it uh it, it went pretty bad pretty quickly uh she was like borderline harassing some of my friends that were coming on like i was getting interviews with elvis the alien she'd be like yeah. fuck you gotta make sure you push it down and shit Bitch, I've been doing this for a long fucking time. That's not how you get people to respond. She did it to a few of my fucking uh, bigger people that were coming on. It was agitating, but it was uh, everything was within reason. You know, it's like you tell her to calm down, she calmed the fuck down. Well, then these rumblings start happening about uh, links. You know, um, yeah, the quartering covers a video. He makes a video covering a situation where telling people that you need to be careful. The, the crux of the fucking message of the video was you need to be careful because putting links from specific, any CBD, but specifically this one, you might get fucking hit. And it was the one that I was using. So I was like, oh shit. So I reach out to her and I'm like, hey, uh, should we take this shit down? And she tells me, no, that convinces me not to, you know, it'll be fine. And, you know, all these people have it up to it. It should be totally fine. I didn't really think much of it uh, because, you know, it's Jeremy who gives a fuck at the end, especially back then. I didn't watch him. I didn't really care much about what he said. It's quartering. Who fucking cares? Everything will be fine. I'm not going to get a strike. Who cares? Two days later, I get a strike. (laughs) Two days later, I get a fucking strike. It really kills the channel, hurts the channel quite a bit. Um, And it basically, I write a tweet it said the quartering was right. Well, in the fucking video, apparently he made some vague comments about her. Uh, I don't know if he ever used her by name, but he made, said some shit about her. She freaks the fuck out. Like, I stabbed a fucking knife in her heart and goes on the fucking warpath. Tommy gets annoyed with her immediately because she's yeah. fucking batshit crazy. And I don't want to see her destroyed, but she's doing this shit to herself. Um... 
at this point I had already, I think I had already gone to Chicago. I met her in real person and all this stuff. We did a stream together. I threw her up in her car. She picked me up from the airport. <laughs> and she was a friend. She was a buddy. She helped me out. She, she, she helped me get from the airport to my fucking mother's house in Chicago. She was definitely a friend. We did a stream together. It was all this stuff. So yeah. after the fallout happens, she starts going crazier and crazier. And then with some back and forth with Tommy, I get a call one day from Tommy and Tommy's going, she's accusing you of rape. I'm like, what? Jesus. The what fuck? the fuck are you talking about? Man, I, she, she, she's saying that you're sharing bed with her. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I see the tweet where she starts, where she said something about sharing a bed with me. And we did a stream on her bed. I'm yeah. like, yo, but nothing fucking happened that night. It was, it was an awkward evening, if fucking anything. Um, but I was like, what the fuck is going on? And she recants the whole thing. She, she, nothing but a gentleman, all this type of stuff, right? Yeah. So she, at that point, I don't think she had ever said anything about a rape situation, but she was fucking going all kinds of Spurg fucking nuts in so many different places at this point. And it turned out she was on all these fucking internet watch lists and all this stuff. And so many people had to get involved. Truces were made. People who were as crazy as her or even crazier had to get involved to try to quell her crazy. It, it really was something else. And then Tommy gets involved when she just doesn't fucking stop. And I had actually asked Tommy to fucking take it easy a few times up until the point where he really went nuts. Cause when yeah. she, I think it was when she actually fucking said that I raped her and she like, after she had already recanted everything, Tommy, I think that was it. Yeah. That was when shit really went fucking nuts. So that's essentially what happened <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of specifics I'm forgetting, a lot of crazy aspects that happen. But if you have any questions about anything specific, feel free, man. It was well. Just I know that um, basically you walked into a locale, right? She, <laughs> yeah, you like basically like you you basically uh, met this person and then you found out they're like the female Christian, like they, that they're fucking insane. Uh, I looked up some. They have a video series on them. Oh yeah, I, up, I think a few, dude. Yeah, I looked them up. Uh, Apparently, they would have one-way conversations with people on Twitter. Like, she would be tweeting. She wouldn't at them. She wouldn't reply on, right, reply to their tweets. She would just be writing on her timeline, but she would be having a conversation with them, but with no, like, no other context. It's just her, like, talking to Ethan Ralph, yeah. but, and, like, reply, responding to him, <laughs> but there's no one else talking to her. It's just her, and it, it's, it's really weird. See, uh, I think people struggle and people fucking have issues. And I, and especially now working at a pawn shop, I see it even fucking more. I'm a sympathetic yeah. guy. Yeah. And especially if you're helping out the channel. And I'm, I'm all about trying to kick the ball to everybody. I want everybody to eat. I want everybody to grow. You know, so I try to help as much as I fucking can. Um, I also am an advocate of not getting close to people. And the Salvo situation is a great fucking example as to why. I think people talk to each other way too much on here as fucking is. Some of you guys spend more hours with each other in a day on Discord than you do with your fucking families or even at work. That's troubling. But I, I guess I have it's a probably me just being awesome. <laughs> Neither do I, Matt. You're my family. <laughs> Why'd you make it immediately Aww. about you, you fuck? Uh, but you know what I mean. There is like yeah. some people Fair really, way. it's it's pretty fucking extreme. Um, so I try to keep people at arm's length for the most part. And with her, I I did. You know, and so to, to when she's made it personal and it, it just threw me because I'm like, what the fuck, man? It's like you have an issue because I said something you didn't like about what, what the quartering said. Okay. I even walked that back, that part back for her immediately because we were still affiliated at that point. I was like, anything that, there, that he was talking about her, I wasn't even aware. I'm talking about specifically what he was talking about in the links because it happened. And it really pissed me off that she didn't give a fuck that it happened. She took no responsibility, not even a sorry. I got it fucking undone myself. I took care of it. Oh, finding out that she was in the background, not taking any responsibility to the trusted flagger. I mean, the whole fucking thing was just ass fucking backwards. Yeah. It pisses me off thinking about mm. it in hindsight, too. Because uh, it really cost like, my channel, Matt. I yeah. was growing. Things were going so fucking well. And then not being able to live stream when you are a live stream channel, it's the kiss of fucking death. Yeah. I mean, Tommy just went through that. Uh, At least he's yeah, 50, right. I was 4,000. Oh, yeah. You're, you're absolutely whatever right. I was. Yeah. It was no, terrible. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think this community breeds people like her. Um, you, they're around every corner. Uh, one moment, 
you're having a nice conversation with someone, you think they're a pretty chill person, then you have one slight argument with them, and then the next thing you know, they're writing a letter to Tommy and mentioning your dead mom. Right. Uh, like, yeah. it's just... <laughs> from experience matt (laughs) yeah yeah, well i'm just saying like it like in the context of yeah i know his mom is dead but he should be more aware on discord and do his job like like it's just right come without a but Mm. it's they're around every corner uh Mm. you always have to be very self-aware when you're in discord servers when you're in voice chats in this community uh that the that the person you're talking to has the potential to be it's a schizo yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it can come at any moment. All it takes is one little fucking disagreement, and it just will just turn into chaos. And you got to mm-hmm. be very careful who you're talking to. Don't trust anyone. Too late. You know? <laughs> Except for me. You can trust yeah, me. It, <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. The good folk at now recording. You can yeah. trust any yeah. of them. Yeah. Those are the ones you want to tell all your beavers. secrets to. Yeah. I ain't got the energy to be that crazy. I'm just. I, I, don't, I don't know. You, how can you? I don't know, it's Matt. Exhausting. I think Liana is going to expose you one day, all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You got her phone number and everything, Matt. Oh, Bro. dude, she's hot. Yeah, she's get in there. And, and her fucking, like, meth-induced psychosis, she's just randomly sent me her phone number on Twitter once, and I blocked her. <laughs> she's like, you fucking <laughs> like, leave me alone. But she's cool now. Uh, she did a whole bit with Tommy today, uh, shitting on Connor, pretending to be... Uh, uh, Connor's girlfriend and being like, oh, she's oh, not Connor. on meth right now, currently, right? She's no, no, she's perfect. Right like, no, she's had the a huge 180. Uh, I'm actually pretty proud of her. She, uh, she's funny, uh, and she's a pretty chill person. She just had a little breakdown, and it that happens, happens you know. Happens. Um, mm. but uh, hey, I have a question for you. Ooh, yes, uh, Paul about, about, uh, you, know, you know, the product, right? That, that, uh, that person sponsored, right? Yes, was it, was it natural, okay? healthy meth? Oh, <laughs> you just went there. <laughs> but, what, you're sponsored by the Chainsaw Teeth fucking bitch Natural Healthy Bats. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, see, yeah. now my joke is ruined. Thanks. I'm sorry. Natural Healthy <laughs> no. CBD. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah oh. that's what it was. <laughs> Can I say when I first came to this community, I was watching the Augie stream and I was looking at his chat and I'm like, who the fuck is Natural Healthy CBD? Why are they so like this makes no sense? Why is their name that? I don't get it. And they're just like chatting around, like, oh, yeah, that's cringe. Oh, yeah, that's gay. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? Who are these people? Like, yeah. well, what's going on? <laughs> like, why yeah. was your name? Yeah. Very scary people can exist and uh, <laughs> where they have nothing better to do. But, and there's that's the thing. This community in particular, I think, really does breed this as well, where there's a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands. Whether yeah. they're disabled, whether they're just not working, what, whatever oh, yeah. the case may be, taking care of parent, whatever. They're in the house a lot, and they have a lot of time on their hands, meaning they can watch you, research you, know more about you than you even fucking realize most of the time, and do it without you even realizing, without you even having a fucking moment to even realize what's happening. And they can yeah. put you on a defensive so fucking easily because they're essentially studying you. It's like some of these people are fucking clinically insane, but they have nothing yeah. better to do than watch all this insanity. Exactly. Um, before uh, I wanted to add, Mitch, are you there? Are you there, Mitch? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yes. All right. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about something real quick. And I figured I'd bring it up now. Uh, um, Cassandra, you remember Cassandra? Cassandra yeah. explains it all. Yeah. Uh, I've been. I, I was sent a tweet where. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, she tweeted out, gotta go, safety is compromised, uh, tell the Mitch show bye. Do you know anything <laughs> about this? Um, no, that's about as much as I know, because she didn't message me bye, she's just gone. The fuck? Really? Yeah. And I don't know why. Dave, you know Cassandra, she's called in the show recently. Like, a, Yeah, a actually, she's been very nice to me. Uh, she She's written me a few DMs. She she had very, very nice, like, family-type invite about, like, Christmas. And she's been very nice to me. Yeah. Um, I think she even sent me a couple of hats. Uh, yeah. Very nice. So I, I find that really weird. Yeah, uh, I think Keemstar was mentioning her on the show. Like, fuck you, Cassandra, call in, you know, or something like that. Like, And then she put out those tweets, and... And what was the time of the tweet? It. Nothing's gonna happen uh, to you, 29th. Cassandra. Ain't nothing Ooh. gonna happen to you. Kim ain't gonna bite you. Ain't gonna yeah. Hurt you. So, okay. Cassandra, if you're listening, um, uh, we'd like to talk to you. See what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. okay? Yeah. 
Shit. Yeah, uh, I sent her a message on Discord, which I don't think she's read. Um, she's my only OnlyFans subscriber, so I sent whoa. her a message on there as well. Oh wow! <laughs> had no response. What do you do, what do, you do on your OnlyFans? You show feet uh, like rest I lost a bit and had to show my butt. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. That's what you did. That stupid thing. That's right. Yeah, I helped, <laughs> I helped make that happen. That was a good time. Well, the thing she's is, like, old. she was like, she was turning into your producer, right, Mitch? Like, yeah, she was helping a lot. She's very so. nice. She was. It was in she is very nice, like, isn't she? She's incredibly yeah. nice. Kind of a yeah, boomer. And then yeah, left. Uh, bad older. Mike. Very bad Mike. Very right. bad Mike. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Dude, her little shit show with Zylo is pretty funny. You should, um, you should have heard Matt's mic back in the day, bro. Oh, my, oh, my mic wasn't was that jagged. bad. It's pretty yes, good. Yes, it was. It wasn't that bad. Was it you Huffman were, level you, bad? You guys got to go back to early days of Huffman. Was he was bad. using a 2004 MacBook uh, mic. Oh, you're talking about the MacBook <laughs> mic. Uh, that wasn't that bad. It was better than yes, my headset so. mic. That's not true. Really? I thought it was better. I don't no. know. I think Tommy used to use a fucking rock band mic. He did, yeah. Yep. You know, <laughs> you know the moment I, I, changed, I, I got this nice mic and everything, and I'm like, Tommy, look, I got a mic. He's like, oh, I don't like it. Uh, you sound different. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you, you don't sound the way I like. I like the headset. I'm like mother. I like oh my, come on, man. Like, I just, it takes a second to get used to. That's all it is. You go back to the early days too with uh, Huffman. I shit. Tommy used to scream at Huffman incessantly about that fucking microphone, and Jeff just never replaced it. I yeah. mean, it was like a good two years, and then Mike, Mike fucking Tommy just sent him one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't deal with it anymore. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Buy a microphone. It's <laughs> exactly. Huffman, though, man. Huffman's like, that's uh, not vitamins. That's not a protein shake. Why am buying that? Uh, Core, did you have any questions for Dave? Um, no, I'm all right. I think well, fuck you too, Core. I, 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 Do you I, want I, me to ask you questions? I mean, I'm here. I don't get invited on a lot of shows. I mean, this is your opportunity. What if I die this year? What if I? What if this is my last year on the planet? This is your last opportunity to ask me anything that you have? This is your, Kelly Clark's this opportunity. This call, only comes once in a lifetime. Well, I, I, wait I, a lifetime I, for a moment like I this. noticed you were putting questions somewhere, and uh, so I was yeah. just saying, like we've covered everything we wanted to cover. So if you wanted to ask him a couple questions, you're welcome. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, actually. So how did you start, like, like I don't remember the exact story, but how did you meet Tommy, and what was that like? Um, I know that you guys saw each other in the army, yeah. and then there was really nothing more than that that I was told, and then you guys just somehow became friends. So was- Tommy, Tommy and I kind of disagree on how we met. I think Tommy forgets the first time that we actually met, um, mm. because I can't forget it. I, I had just transferred to the unit. He was already there, uh, 146, 142. He was already on Biesbaden. I was transferring over from Dexheim, a small little tiny post where everyone had sex with each other. It was called Sexheim. It was fucked up. Nice. Highest, TD, highest, highest STD rate in the Army. It's a true story. We, uh, <laughs> so we, I get transferred from out of there. I go to Tommy's unit. Uh, we're going on a training mission, and it was early in the morning, and I get into a car accident. Me and uh, three other soldiers who are on our way to, uh, to to work. Three in the morning, whatever. We, we flip a car on some tr- railroad tracks. I get kind of fucked up. I get my spine gets a little compressed uh, on my uh, my butt there uh, by my coccyx, and I get taken to the hospital. And I'm laid up for about two days in there. And no one came to visit me because everyone was in the field. Tommy was on rear D. And I only remember this because I did not know who this was. Melanie, my wife at the time, was was there with our daughter. And uh, Tommy walks into the room with his wife and uh, a newborn daughter of his own. And I did not know who the fuck this was. And he was very friendly and they were just very nice and wishing me well. And he was like the only person who came and visited me. So it was just very, very nice of him to do. Um, we didn't really see each other much after that, uh, because we were just different unit and we were the same unit, but we we're different platoons. We just did different jobs. Um, we would see each other every so often, but, uh, mostly at like poker tables and things like that. Once I got hurt, uh, that's when we started talking a little bit more when he came back from the deployment because I was already back, uh, and healing up. And that's where we kind of started talking more there. 
uh, kind of laid the groundwork for when I go back and think about it, because we were doing poker and shit in 2009, 2010. That's when I was writing my blog, uh, which would eventually become the book that I fucking wrote. I did write a stupid book, believe it or not. Yeah. And uh, he was talking about podcasting. And we were talking just very vaguely. He was talking about hockey. He was getting me off of football. And then we would later through poker games and stuff start talking about actually doing a show. And he had just done his first one. And he was like, do you want to do it? And uh, did shot from the point. And that's how we started working together. Interesting. When it started <laughs> to roll into commentary, what were you like in that situation? When he started getting attention from Keem and all that, like what was your thought process during all that? So back then, Tommy and I spoke, not a joke, probably four or five hours a day. And yeah. we were talking all the time. Um, and so when he started uh, popping off and started growing and having to change, because in the early days, it was, it was hockey and sports. And then the very end of it, we would talk about, because I was always wanting to talk about nerd stuff or or just kind of trending things, whatever is going on. And he, we would do that at the end of it. And that would kind of start growing into a shot from the point dead, where we would do a little bit more of that type of stuff. And then um, when the Tommy and C2010 thing happened and Keemstar comes in and it starts becoming a little bit more commentary based because Tommy went over and started doing monetize this with the Cronin show and stuff while him and I stopped talking in like 2012. We took a whole year off from each other, which happens. It's happened a couple of times now. Yeah. Um, it just happens uh, sometimes. Yeah, I joined the news team while, during one of those breaks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but now we're stronger. Than I literally ever. joined the news team. I was like, wait, why? Why haven't I? To, wh wh where's Dave at? Got, like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> He's yeah, like, well, it, this happens every so often. We just stop talking. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so when it started to change, when, when I came back and he was doing monetize this, and the sh Huffman was already either just coming on board, Jake Link had taken over my spot, and he was doing a little bit more commentary type stuff but uh when the tommy nc 10, 2010 thing happened and keemstar came on i almost immediately i think it was the first one to, to say it to him like well congratulations your commentary now bud you're, you're a drama channel now and he never let me forget that he uh when when i had keem on as a matter of fact the keemthos interview tommy called me immediately after he goes well congratulations i've been waiting two years to say this to you Congratulations, you're a drama channel now. And I was having a big <laughs> laugh over it. So perspective changing. Like Tommy is the, even when we covered hockey, we covered it in the same way that we covered things now. It's really been no different. We 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 laugh about the shit that was going on, things that even in hockey, if it was something insane, we would cover a lot of like the the puck daddy stuff and uh, Gene, uh, Greg Wachinski, who would later come on. Now he's the, in charge of all the hockey over at ESPN. Like this guy and Tommy fought with this motherfucker back in the day. We fought with all the guys from the puck daddy. He had some of the guys on from this hockey shit. And it was the same stuff. So transitioning over was never a hard thing because at the end of the day, Tommy's a radio douche. Yeah. And the topics just don't really matter. It's the same thing what I'm doing. It's Talk about anything. You know? Anything. I could have, literally to the point where I can have six different co-hosts, some of which, which do different topics, and it doesn't matter. It was, at the end of the day, if you get people like me and Tommy talking, we're just going to talk. And some people will like it, and some people will upper right-hand corner click. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was a very um, – It's all the story is always very interesting, like how you guys met – uh how everything kind of like turned into what it was you get on to catch 33 uh that's a like fucking crazy story mm. hey, that one that's one of my favorites just for sure. may i because that yeah. that one yeah, yeah we'll end it with that we'll end it with that yeah this is a great one because you know uh be going back to the, even the question that you were asking before being the guy that doesn't pop when your friend pops you know, yeah. there's a, there's something you have to eat a little bit there because there were times where I was ahead of Tommy and subs. In fact, I doubled them up at one point. I had done 3000 subs in the, uh, in the wrestling community and Tommy was still under 1500 when baited hit. So I was a little bit ahead at that point. So having him blow past me and I'd never see him again, it leaves me in the fucking dust there. Uh, sub wise, you got to eat a little bit, but at the same time, it's my best friend. And he's going with all these big YouTubers, and I'm hearing about it every day. I'm the confidant. I'm talking to him every day. Where like it, it was an amazing experience. So when it ended, it's like, well, fuck. What do you do now? And then Tommy calls me one day, and he goes, "All right, look, Clown's gonna talk to you. Just 
I don't even just just talk to him. So when I he tells me that he wants me on for the this new podcast they're gonna do, I'm like, first thing I'm like is why? Why would you why? Like no offense to even myself. I'm not even trying to shit on myself. I'm like, but why? Because I know Tommy wants to go bigger. Why wouldn't you? I know there were a couple names on the table like Pyrocynical. Uh, people that just made sense. If you're going to replace the biggest member of the podcast, you got to have a draw. Yeah. And it, I didn't even take it offense that Tommy wouldn't think that it would work with me being the, uh, the now smallest guy of the group. Right. Um, but clown wanted it and he wanted me on there. And uh, Tommy was, he wasn't, he was not going to stand in the way of it. Know, I was like, no, hell know, no, this is going to work. Do you know why clown wanted you? No. To okay. this day, uh, Clown liked the way that we spoke. Uh, okay. He, he he likes our banter. He liked the way that I would just kind of go at it. You know. I, Do you think I, that I, it might have been a situation where it's like baited made Tommy now Cash Thirty Three can make Dave? Potentially. You know, yeah. we weren't that close. You know, right. we we had talked a little bit, but I didn't know him. You know, we uh, he had come on a few times. You know, he he did that amazing thing when I interviewed Pip Lad. That was crazy, and he uh, bombed my channel with him and Pyrocynical. Yeah, that was a crazy one. So he was always cool to me, but I never expected that he'd want to, you know, go forth in a, a podcasting realm with me. You know, so that was unexpected, and it was the biggest break that my career would get. And the rest is history, huh? You know, unfortunately, it really wasn't. <laughs> it, 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 it no, you're a million a, sub subscribe. You've got million subs. You're on it, top it, of the world. <laughs> it died a terrible death, and I had to eat that. And it was a, a very difficult thing because I feel to this day that Catch 33, when you go back and you listen to those four episodes and, and look at them, of course, because they were beautiful and stunning, even, even now they still hold up. We had some of the best, funniest fucking shit out there. We had such good chemistry, such good rapport. If we stay together, I'm a millionaire right now. I yeah. believe that, like, whole fucking heartedly. All we had to do was keep our shit together. Right. And I Listen. never thought I'd have another, another opportunity. Now I'm like, like everything else in my life, at some point, I'll just end up going, well, fuck it, I'll do it myself. I'll go leech off all my friends, and we're going to go climb up this monster fucking mountain of YouTube together. So that's just what we're doing. Yeah. And hey, uh, seeing this new uh, like Dave revolution, you know, where Nick's coming on, Willie's coming on, Bo Vice coming on, Xylee's about to come on, uh, like all of these uh, Druid sharings coming on and just seeing Tommy. me grow. Tommy, <laughs> seeing you guys have like once every once a month, but uh, seeing you guys yeah, grow. Yeah, when, he, when he's got time. <laughs> when, yeah, seeing, seeing you grow like this way, being able to be a part of it, it's been a lot of fun. It, uh, I really enjoy coming on your show because uh, at first I was kind of like, fuck, man, this is a, like, I like doing it, but damn, this is like, this is like, I got to do this, this, this now. <laughs> but then I came on your show and it was like a lot more comfortable because I don't, I don't have to do much. I just, I get to bullshit with you while on Shop of the Point, I'm, you know, I'm clicking, I'm, I'm putting some. Can I tell that story chat. real quick? Because that was not the original plan. Can I tell that story? Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. So when uh, Nerdy John quit for like the fourth time, I, I was left without a co-host or a producer rather. I wanted somebody who could just run the board and just do all the little things. Yeah. And basically what uh, Doc used to do, you know, Doc, you know yeah. Doc Shivago and shit, which what I thought Matt was doing for Tommy. No. So when, when uh, John starts to threaten to, to leave, you know, he starts leaving and stuff. I, I tag Matt. I'm like, yo, you want to do this? Um, and he agrees, but I, he didn't, I guess he didn't know what I was asking. No. <laughs> Cause they're like, I want to run the board. I'm, I want to give him fucking access to my YouTube. And Matt's like, no, I don't want to do any of that. Like, are you out of your mind? I'm like, oh fuck man. I'm like, okay. All right. All right. All right. That's fine. We'll make it work. And then I get blessed with Riveter. Uh, yeah. Who, my God. Who's who would have thought that was going to work? Like I give Riveter a lot of shit, but he's been your best producer. Oh, who would have thought that would have worked? Holy uh, fuck. I I kind of thought it would work great. Uh, when he first, I think, I can't remember what happened, but I know, like, I, I saw him call in or something. I was like, this guy's been a fan of yours. This guy's been helping you out. This guy wants to be a part of this fucking show. Give it to him because <laughs> I think he will do great. And his dynamic of being the slow Southern uh, guy who uh, can't get to a point just works for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he can take jokes and I don't feel bad picking at him. That's nope. that's what you need. You need someone on the show that you do not feel bad picking at, right? And it, it just turned 
it's just it, it, it it's uh it's a it's a it's a great dynamic uh you it's guys been got gold. it's been yeah. gold and then and then like you in the role that you've chosen you've been amazing you've been yeah. integral to it because you get me you yeah. get a lot of the humor that not everybody gets you you really do and i've appreciated that and you've brought there's just something about you, Maddie. Everybody yeah. fucking loves Matt Pitt. There's just, you do what you do well. For not now. everybody's even <laughs> sure what you do, but yeah. whatever you do do, you do it fucking amazingly and you bring a magic to us. You call you the glue, call you whatever you want, but you've helped me incredibly and you gave me a lot of, uh, I think, street cred, you know, yeah. to lack of a better phrase. And then you, Willie Mac too. Jesus Christ, Willie believed years ago when he was trying to get me to do stuff like this. You got to talk to people more, Dave. You got to go out there and fucking reach out. They will say yes. I never thought they would, and they have. Yeah. And now we've yeah. got it all filled uh, up. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know what I do sometimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I think people are going to realize, what the fuck does Matt Pitt do? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed a lot. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I look forward to the Dead on Dave shows for sure. Like, it's just relaxing. You know. A different experience. It's, yeah. uh, I think is uh, for as similar as it is to other shows, yeah. it's equally as different, yeah. and it's it's just a different vibe. It's the yeah. late show stuff, and I'm just having a blast. We're gonna hit twenty thousand subs this year. I'm yeah. telling you, it's gonna fucking happen. This ride. I, I agree with you. Year. I agree with you, and I, I will say, like me and Tommy are cool because I understand Tommy. I'm I'm close to his age, but I'm he's still way older than me. You and I. Are a lot more closer in age and we get a lot of references that tommy would not get like salute exactly. your shorts and stuff like that you know <laughs> like and yeah so it's like there, there's a nice little click I, I usually know all the references you're making so right. yeah if you yeah. try to get try to throw some of these references towards tommy he's gonna call you half a fag so you always gotta watch yeah yeah, yeah. he's not he wasn't watching nickelodeon in 1994 you know so no, he, was <laughs> playing, he was playing knife collection to 25 people in somewhere in fucking lower jersey yes. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly long yeah. live warp drive yeah. he was fucking <laughs> <laughs> he was he was banging some broad at an asbury park you know or something oh, like that fuck, man. he was one of my favorite fucking people ever my god yeah. Uh, Jesus yeah. Christ, what a psycho. Bro. I remember trying to tell my mom about Tommy, and it was just like, <laughs> it was just like, I was like, you got to understand, he's from Germany. Because my mom, you know, my mom lived in Germany for a while when she was young, uh, when she was uh, like a like in her early 20s. Whereabouts? She, uh, I don't remember. I never oh, remember. Man, cool. I know it was across, I know it wasn't V Spot, because I kept asking her, were you around V Spot? And she'd say, no, but she did live in. She lived there with her ex husband, and um, who, who uh, like this was way before I was born, like in the seventies. Um, but uh, she, she, uh, she was also born and raised in Jersey, so she. Oh you know, shit! <laughs> yeah, so she had like. So I was just telling her like, yeah, I'm working for this guy who's from New Jersey who lives in Germany, was in the military. She's like, oh, that's really cool, and I was like, yeah, he's very loud and you know, obnoxious and pretty cool. And he's like, and she's like, yeah, that's every guy from New Jersey. <laughs> like, right. you know? Yeah. Now, so, how do yeah. you explain Tommy? He's, a, he's a loud guy who lives in Germany from New Jersey, sounds Italian, but somehow's Irish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I don't fucking know. Fucking bizarre, man. I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> you'd think he was at least like 40% Italian. But, right. Uh, at yeah. the very least. But he yeah. drinks like an Irishman, so that's that's fair. Right, yeah. Uh, Toxic Mitch, you guys got anything? I just wanted to ask Dave, when it comes to women, do you prefer the ones with the big areolas or the small ones? <laughs> oh, see, first off, there is no wrong answer when it comes to titties. Nipples, all <laughs> of it. I like the big ones, the small ones. And look, I'm 40 years old, and I, I have a body that looks like a melted candle. I can't discriminate on titties. I've, I've taken Olivia Newton-John half a titty. I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> I will suck it. You give me a second. I'll make it last a lifetime. I swear to God, ladies, I'll be so good to you. <laughs> that was That's that the was thing. the correct answer. Well done. Yeah, we can't be picky, right? Like, <laughs> and, and, like we kind of are. Like, I kind of am sometimes as a joke, but in reality, if some girl showed me your tits, I'd be like, oh, perfect. Thank like, you. 10 oh. out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, toxic, you got anything? Yeah, uh, going with the theme of this episode, I guess. Knowing what you know now, would you still wrestle Salvo? Yeah. Yeah, and now now I'd fight dirty. Now I'd like see. I was just gonna try to take him down because I wanted to challenge myself against the guy who I put on a pedestal as being on the par of a a Paul caliber wrestler. But now 
it's like I, I have to put some elbows into the groin, and he's got a crooked dick anyway. I don't know, man. It would be I'd probably <laughs> just have to stay away from it now. You might be right. I might have to not not razzle him. Hell yeah. Well, Dave, I think I think that ends it. Uh, thank you for coming on, sir. This has been a lot of fun. This has been one of my favorite episodes with a guest. It's like you can get going, and it's just fun to hear you talk. Uh, Line me up and watch me fucking go. I, exactly. I make you a promise, man. I'm going to fuck up sometime this year just for you. Bro. I'm going to get into some sort of fucking shit just so you can have me back here because Bro, this will. was a goddamn pleasure. I will. I will. As soon as you're in some, I don't know, <laughs> like you fucking put a spurg in a headlock or call their mom a, a horny whore or something. I don't know. But like, yeah, as soon as you're on, we'll, we'll have you. We'll have you instantly. Yeah. Cool. I want all you guys on my show. I want to do a fucking episode with the now recording boys where we just talk about all the spurgatry that's going on. So let's book that yeah. in the future soon too. Yeah, because uh, we definitely need to have we, we need your interaction with Beavers because Beavers is a a great oh. part of our podcast and he hasn't been around for a while and we're we're missing him. We are like missing Lawrence. him. Yeah, let's bring he's, him in. I he's like turned in, he's turned into kind of the favorite of the group, uh, which is all what he's always wanted. So I don't know. People that. like my pie thing comment last uh, episode. Uh, yeah, uh, good, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the comments Anyways, loved it. Uh, thank you for listening to now recording. I'm Matt Pitt. That's Toxic Pip Up. That's Mickey Mitch. That's Core. And that is Dead on Dave. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have a criticism or you just like us. Just uh, just listen kill what yourself. You like about us. Okay, mm-hmm. thank you, Toxic. Uh, sure. Special <laughs> shout out to our premium tards: King Brick Shit, uh, Undead Proxy, Ghosty, and Plum. Slum. There you go, Slum. And yeah, uh, and remember, guys, uh, I got nothing. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>